Hello, everyone, and welcome to my third video, the first being the introduction to Shad songs, the second one being the sort of intricacies of the arrangement. And this video is all about how to actually put your uh, submission together. I'm going to walk through it step by step. So uh, the first step is to figure out which instrument you're going to be playing, because that's going to determine uh, what part you're looking at and what part you're playing. So you have a couple of different options here. Uh, if you are singing, uh, hopefully you already know your vocal range. If you don't, um, maybe I'll do another video on that coming up. Uh, but I'm going to assume for now that you know what you sing, in which case you would uh, choose the appropriate part, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, uh, and then you can sing that part. If you prefer, you can also use the treble or bass clef uh, lead sheets that are posted in the same folder. Um, and so yeah, so that's what you would sing if you're using uh, the, uh, that's what you would use if you're singing. Uh, if you are strumming or using a percussive instrument, you can also use this score because it includes uh, the beat here. So I put ukulele here, but this could be any uh, strumming instrument. So ukulele, guitar, mandolin, banjo, I assume those would also work. Um, and as long as you play these three chords in this rhythm, you're set. Uh, you could also play a different percussive instrument that can play these chords uh, with this part. So for example, uh, the piano, the xylophone, the glockenspiel. I don't know what instruments you guys have at home. Um, I'm assuming that you have some really fantastic stuff. Uh, you can play those things. If it's atonal, like uh, just a drum set or a djembe or something, uh, play this rhythm too. That's awesome. Now, if you uh, play a different instrument, uh, then you're going to have to pay attention uh, to what key your instrument plays in. So when you read sheet music and the sheet music says C, does it actually play a C, like a or does it play a different note? Um, I'll go quickly go over. Uh, the instruments that um, play C. So if you're in C, that's basically all string instruments. You just need to pay attention to what clef you know to play in. Bass clef is here, treble clef is here, alto clef is put in this folder. Um, also the flute, the oboe, the bassoon, the trombone, the euphonium, and the tuba uh, are all tuned in C. So you can feel free to use uh, the appropriate clef uh, that's listed in C for these ones. And those should work for you. If they're out of range, please let me know and I can transpose the file for you. Um, I am not uh, I've not done a lot of these arrangements before, so I'm not super familiar with these arrangements, so I'm happy to make accommodations as need be. Um, but there's also some other instruments. I went over this in the video, but I will review. Um, if you are an instrument that is in B-flat, so the B-flat clarinet, the bass clarinet, the tenor sax, or the B-flat trumpet, uh, you're going to want to play this key right here. This one is in the right uh, key for you to play. If you play an E-flat instrument, which is the E-flat clarinet, the alto sax, the bear sax, this is the one for you. If you play an F instrument, which is basically just the French horn, this one is for you. I know I put these in another folder just to declutter the experience, but let me say, I love all of these instruments. Uh, any violas or French horns we could get in this would be, um, and I love all the other instruments too. I'm just, you know, highlighting the ones that typically are underrepresented in ensembles. All right. Um, and if you want to get really weird with the instrument submissions, that's totally fine. Um, but that's up to you to figure out how that's gonna sort of mesh with all the others. So you picked your instrument. Now you gotta find your files. I already showed you where those are. So you're gonna download that file for the part. You're also gonna download the click track. This is the most important audio file. If you download no other audio files, make sure you download this one because this is the one that's going to count you in. Um, I've already downloaded it off screen. Um, I'm not gonna show you my desktop where I've downloaded it to uh, because it has lots of dog pictures and that would be distracting. Um, and also any desired background audio. If you wanna make sure that your instrument is in tune while you play, this is a nice tool. So you could also download, for example, this MIDI demo. Do I have this downloaded yet? Um, you know what, I do not. So I'll show you, you can just click right click and you can download. I may also put this on the Google Classroom, um, in which case you could download it from there too. It'll be the same file. Um, I should show you how to access this folder. It occurs to me. Uh, this folder is in Beetlejuice under Shad Song. So for example, if you're just chilling in my drive, you click on shared, shared Drives, you find Beetlejuice, and then you click on Shad Songs. Look at that. Boom, that's how you get to this folder. I'll also try to post them on Google Classroom. Um, so once you have all the audio downloaded, um, that is your opportunity to practice next your part. And I will encourage that you practice uh, because uh, the arrangement is slightly different from the original couple of respects. I go over that in the previous video. So make sure they're familiar with what your part needs you to do. And also, if you're playing a melody or harmony, um, uh, those syncopated rhythms, uh, good to figure those out in advance just in case. 
maybe I'll do a rhythm video too. I don't know, man. I'm just having fun with this. Um, and I'm happy to help out in any way that I can. So uh, once you have practiced, even if it's just a little bit, uh, it's time to get set up. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find a device that can play back uh, the audio that you need. Uh, so if that's just a click track, then you could probably put that on your phone um, or on your computer and then hook up some headphones and then listen to that as you play and then you're good. Um, you may wish to, if you want to listen to two of these at the same time, then you'll probably need to find a program like Audacity or GarageBand, uh, put those files, uh, they're already lined up so that if you line them up at the start of this, of the track, um, if the, rather the starts of the tracks are lined up, uh, then uh, they will play synchronously and they will be in sync throughout the whole thing. In fact, I will demonstrate that right now. So uh, I will open Audacity because that's what I currently have um, open. So we have our Audacity file right here. You can just drag and drop. So I've got um, the click track right here. You can drag and drop in there. Boom, there's that. Uh, you can then take uh, the MIDI demo, drag it and drop it, and there we go. And then if you listen, uh, it is a recording audio, just double checked. And so now you have these things. And so if you're doing this all in one device, then you can actually do is you can listen to this in the headphones and then record on top of that in GarageBand uh, while you are listening. Uh, if you would like to do that, then I would recommend, uh, if you can, getting an external microphone. If you have one lying around, for example, this bad boy right here. But if you can just use uh, your built-in microphone for your computer, that works too. Now, it may be uh, that you will not be able to put all this together, and then that's totally fine. You could absolutely uh, just listen to this on your phone uh, and then find another device to record on. But let's talk about that recording. Um, so once you set up the, the playback that it goes into, you need to set up the rec audio recording device. I already mentioned you could set up this here. You can use a phone and use the Voice Notes app. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you have something to record the audio, that is great. You may also optionally uh, record yourself video while you do this. And if you do, then we can put that together into a cool music video. You do not need to this, but you absolutely can. Um, so if you need to record video, um, you could absolutely just use um, the programs that are installed in your computer. If you have a webcam, um, you could use uh, Photo Booth or iMovie or whatever. Um, what do you use on Windows? Zoom, of course. Um, you can also record video. That's what I'm doing right now, actually. I'm just using Zoom to record all this video. Um, and uh, do not worry too much about syncing up the audio in the video. I'll take care of that on my end uh, once we get to that. And so you'll have your playback device. You'll have whatever audio recording device you have. You'll have your video recording device. If you're recording device, uh, if you're recording video, I would recommend having a separate device for recording audio if possible. If it's just not possible, feel free to, um, I would rather have the video than not. So feel free to just record it on video and then um, I'll take care of splitting it up. But if you can record audio and video separately, uh, that's great. The last part of setup, most important part, tune your instruments. Um, we're going to have a lot of people playing at the same time. If these instruments are out of tune, we're going to notice really quickly, and there's not a whole lot I can do about that on my end. So there are plenty of free uh, tuning apps available for phones and devices. So just make sure uh, that you tune. We will base it around um, A is equal to 440 hertz. If you know what that means, you know what to do. If you don't know what that means, just download a tuning app and tune um, to whatever sort of default tuning notes um, are established. Don't go fiddly with the settings. Uh, once you have all that set up, time to record. You'll record your part. In fact, why to put that ukulele away? We can demonstrate right here. So uh, if you have it, we have the headphones in, then you can actually listen to this while you are recording. And then we can just press the record button right here. It will not let me record uh, while I am screen sharing. You know what? That makes sense. That makes sense. But normally, um, you know, it would start recording, and then when it's done recording, once it's done recording, you would press stop, and then let's pretend that this is the recording. Let's pretend I recorded this. It's beautiful. What you do is you mute all the other parts, 
you don't have to delete them, you just have to mute them. And then you can go ahead and export that file. Ideally, as an MP3, WAVE should also work, as showed M4A and ACC, depending on what program you're using to export. Um, if you're really struggling, just let me know. Uh, I know that Audacity exporting can be a pain in the butt sometimes. Um, I demonstrated this using Audacity. If you're using GarageBand, it's basically the same steps. It's just the interface is going to look different. Um, oh, and for the GarageBand uh, exporting, you'll have to export it to iTunes and then copy that file out from iTunes to your desktop. But then what you can do, once it's all done, is you can submit that file, that for audio recording file, to the Google Classroom. So if you just go to Classroom, oh, no, that is. There we go. Classroom Google Com. Hop over to Beetlejuice. You can't see this yet because I haven't posted it yet. But Shad Sings Riptide. I need to work on consistency of names. This should be Shad Songs. Uh, there will be a thing that says submit recordings here. Uh, that's an assignment. So you can submit that. And you'll submit a file. And that'll be the audio file. If you have any video files, uh, plop them in here. And that's where I'll see them. And that is how you submit your Shad Song Sing performance. Ta-da! Uh, if you have any questions at all, please let me know. I want to make this happen. So anything that I can do to help you help me make this happen, I'll be delighted to do. Uh, that is the end of this uh, Music Rambles with Josh. And next time, we'll do something else. And it'll be cool and fun. And I look forward to seeing you then. Until then, Josh rambles away!